Well, here it is running. CTC's latest version of their A8 machine, which I picked up for $92.40. I didn't really need another printer and I didn't really expect it to be any good. But for $92.40, I just had to find out. So basically, I started by watching all of the YouTube videos I could find on the CTC version printer. It's a wood frame printer. All the latest uh, YouTubes I could find and all the information that were on those videos was pretty much true. This one is different though, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and post it. Um, they made some changes to bring the price down to $92.40. Although, as of this morning when I logged into uh, AliExpress to check on it, it was up to $105. So, it's gone up 10 bucks. But, um, it's supposed to have a 200 by 200 build plate at 180 tall. Um, one of the main differences I see it that they, where they went to cut cost on my version versus the other ones that I see on YouTube is there's no longer any power switch or a movable power cord. Now you just hardwire the power cord right to the power supply. In my case, I had an old light switch, like a wall light switch. I'll show you here in a second. I just put that in there so I'd have a switch. And as with all of them, there's no part cooling fan. So you can see a big... Uh, mess here that I have. Just hold on with clips so I can remove it in case you want to see what the printer looks like without the fan. I just went to Thingiverse, grabbed a, 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 fran, a fan hood, shroud, duct, whatever you'd like to call it, and a, a blower that I had laying around and I just have it clipped on there. Because without it, I mean, you have no chance of printing anything of any value. The, uh, the ad also said it was going to come with a roll of filament, and they show a picture of a full kilo roll of filament, but it doesn't. It just comes with a little handful loop of filament, you know, like you'd use in a 3D printer. I mean, in a pen, 3D pen thing. So that wasn't of any value. And all of the pictures and all of the YouTube ones that I've seen show the... Uh, the push button knob type control, which is much nicer. This is the uh, the four, well, five buttons if you count the center one, which is, as everyone knows, it's had one just horrible because even if the buttons are free, they just they don't react right. You push them, they either go, they don't go, they reset, they go back. They just totally worthless. Um, some of the things that the other YouTube guys that are putting together though is suggested is that when you have it assembled put it on a, a piece of wood because otherwise the the frame can tweak and turn and then everything gets out of alignment and it, it's very true that was the, one of the first things I did was to cut up an old chunk of three quarter inch wood that was laying out in the carport and affixed it to it so if, even if the wood was warped it would always be the same when you build it and one of the other suggestions I saw on one of the YouTube watches they said go buy a couple more I bought four of these 10 millimeter nuts so that cost me one dollar for this upgrade and basically there's a one in there and again I'll move the camera in a minute but the idea is to pinch this rod onto this upright vertical on both sides because they don't do that and by tightening that up that adds a lot of rigidity to the whole frame makes it a lot more stable let's see so I had this camera's on a tripod, so this may be a little hard for me to move around, but there's the power supply section, you see, and there's a black fan sitting on there. Well, I just had an old junk 24-volt uh, fan left over from one of my Flash Forward Dreamers from four, over four years ago. Anyway, I just uh, glued that fan on there, even though it was 24-volt and wired it to the 12. Keeps that power supply nice and cool, <clears throat> and running at a lower voltage, it, that fan was totally silent. On there you can kind of see uh, the light switch. I mean, I literally had a just a wall light switch lying around. I went, well, I'd like to have a switch on mine, so I just stuck that right on there. It's a wood frame. You can do the same thing, too. Just cut it and punch it in. Okay, what else? Let's get around here. Maybe you can see a little bit more of it. 
uh, wire management was left up to you. I think I made it look a lot neater. Instead of having the wire pigtail coming straight out of the back of the um, hotbed, I went ahead and uh, here, let me bring some more light around to this side. I just brought it over and cable tied it to one of the screws over there, then looped it up and cable tied it back here. And that keeps it out of the way. Oh, and as far as the build plate, obviously that's a that's one of the ultra bases from the Anticubic. I had a spare build plate laying around. It came with a glass plate, which worked fine, had tape on it. In my first print I did on the uh, their glass bed with tape. But then I remembered I had this sitting out in my shop, so just clipped that on there, and that uh, is much nicer, of course. Okay. What else? There appears to be... I don't know how close in we can get here and stay in focus. But um, you can see it's picking up all the detail, and it does print, but having said that, let's, uh, let's see if we can, maybe if I bring this over to the window we can get better lighting. It seems to have a lot of Z-banding, or Z-wobble, and... I wasn't familiar with their little owl thing that was on the card that came with it, or this little cat thing that came with it. So that's why I decided to print the uh, Moon City off Thingiverse, because I have printed the Moon City on both my MK3 and my Anticubic i3 before, so I know what that was supposed to look like. And the Z-banding is still there. You can definitely see it on the back side of the, the Moon structure. So. I don't have a horrendous amount of wobble on their little hose connections. Uh, you know, some of the other printers actually had the, the nice flex coupling between the stepper and the Z drive screw. This is just threaded rod. It's not a proper lead screw. It's fairly straight on mine, so I'm not really sure why it has so much Z banding, but I can tell you that the slop, these, uh, all of these rods there, there, there. All of them seem to measure about 7.7 .7 to 7.8 uh, millimeters. And so if those are 8 millimeter bearings that they have running on these things, that's an awful lot of slop. And up here in this carriage, these are the two of the biggest ones they have, the longest right here. There's a, an incredible amount of slop there. You can you can take that whole carriage and and rock it in, well in all directions. If if you hear something chattering, it's pretty much always going to be those bearings. It seems so. I'm guessing a lot of it slop might have to do with the uh, rod bearing being so uh, so sloppy. So, but again. It was less than $100 for the, the printer. I'm just amazed it even worked. Of course, um, as mentioned in all the YouTube videos that come with this thing, they're in the extruder. This yellow part is not the original part. That's actually a, a cut down piece off one of my uh, CR10s from the past. But um, you can print off Thingiverse an extruder part to put in there, because this gives you a lever. What comes with it is a plastic shell with a fixed wheel. No spring, no lever. It's just against the, uh, the hob drive gear, whatever you want to call your spline gear that pulls the filament. And there's no adjustment. There's no way to release it or put it in or anything. If you try to use the menu to feed filament in, the most the menu will let you do on the extruder motor is one millimeter per button push. So. I mean, that takes forever to try to drive filament down in there, and, and trying to hand force it just seems to jam. So that was one of the first things that I saw in all the other YouTube videos that uh, I knew I was going to have to deal with. So um, rather than print one out, I had an old plastic one from the CR-10. I just cut it down and bolted it in there. Uh, another thing that I have noticed is where their fan screws and meets up to the heat sink and then the heat sink meets up to the uh, the block 
which you're not going to be able to see, but all of you know it's a, one of these type of blocks. They want them block that bolts up against. Well, there's a small uh, Allen screw that goes into that block, which holds the hot end tube in place. Well, the problem is that Allen screw sticks out just, just the, like the thickness of two pieces of paper. It just sticks out just a little. Well, that means that the heat sink can't lay flat against that block, and if it can't lay against the block, it can't cool the block. So, on the bottom part of the heat sink, when you, uh, if you take the fan and everything off, which you'll have to do anyway when you want to replace this, you'll see where it's been hitting that little screw. If you just file a little notch there to give it a clearance, all of a sudden, the heat sink can lay completely against that uh, cooling block and now you can actually cool the block rather than having the block creep up and once you get the heat creep, of course, then you get jams. So, that's something I would suggest you check on yours anyway and, and fix. Another interesting thing that I noticed is that all of their pre-sliced models that came with it and the one that I sliced, and basically I just used uh, the Anycubic i3 profile except on the uh, retractions since I'm not on a boat and since it's a direct drive, I changed the retraction to 1.5 millimeter. But anyway, you can see how it's not centered, even though in the program it is. There's printed right there is centered, and mine that I've sliced printed right there is centered. So I think the nozzle part of this, which is, you know, right, right there, needs to be mounted further over that way so the metal bracket that bolts onto this plastic carriage. If you drilled a couple of new holes in it, you could kick the whole thing over a little and, and get your center back. I'm sure there's ways to go into the firmware and make adjustments firmware, or I'm sure a person could just learn to move the model on the slicer program over so things are centered. And the only reason you'd care if it was centered is if you were doing something large, you want it to fit on the build plate. But um, for me, a mechanical solution would be easier. Just move the whole extruder over a little bit and center it up that way. So, did I cover everything? No. The other things I wanted to cover is the um, the other video is also mentioned. There's, you know, the screws that hold everything together. There's one right behind here, which I can't show you because that carriage stuff is in the way. But if you, you need to, if you use the screw that they want you to put in there, this z-axis carriage is going to hit, or what do you want to call this piece here, is going to hit and jam and this side won't be able to move past it. So I just put it, if you dig through the bag of screws they gave you, you can find one with a contoured flathead. Put the flathead one in there and then it'll clear. And the same thing is true clear up in here. There's this name tag thing that came with it which says CTCY4443. Well, the screw that would be on this end is normally one of those that sticks out and if you were trying to print your full height axis that actually will jam on the top of the uh, top of the carriage here before you can get all the way up It'll limit your height so I put in a, a flathead or in this case a button head one there so that'll clear so you do need to uh, watch those screws that can jam you do need to put it on something that's always going to be its base so it stays flexible. You do need to add those little nuts. Maybe we can see those added nuts from the back better. Yeah, see it right in there, right there, and there, and they're on the other side of the wood. And basically you're just pinching that wood between the nuts. Really makes a huge difference. I went ahead and added some cable uh, straps around the motor rather than just relying on the, the piece of wood that they had for keeping that stepper motor in place. One other thing, and I don't know if there's any way we'll get this. Let me turn the camera sideways. You see that block of wood? I'm trying to get the right there. I'm kind of illuminating right in the middle. You kind of see the that block of wood. I added that. They had two wood spacers in there, which have your belt right here running uh, up at an angle to the bed and then back down again. Of course that angle changes from front to back. So if you don't use their two wood spacers and just cut a new one that's three quarters of an inch thick, then the belt stays level and equal 
front to back all the way. Gets rid of that stretching, helps things move a little more even. Anyway, like I was saying, I didn't really expect it to be a, a good printer and I was even surprised that it printed at all. I just had to see what you could get for $92.40 and uh, it does print. It doesn't print well, but it does print. I've certainly seen worse prints. There isn't any stringing going on in the Moon City. Um, all the little bits and stuff are there. But you do have, like I say, these fine lines. Well, even on the cat here, let's move. Like I say, I wasn't really sure what it was supposed to look like anyway. I don't print doodads and knickknacks very often. I think they picked these two items as their test ones because they're so textured I think they were counting on the texturing to hide a lot of the uh, Z wobble or Z banding artifacts that uh, that you can see going on on the moon but I haven't spent any time and I won't be spending any time trying to dial it in any better it was just uh, different than the other ones that I saw on YouTube it was a lower price I just had to find out what it would be like and it also came in like three days. I ordered it three days later, it was here. I got super quick, so they must have had uh, had a stock to a state or two away from me, pretty close. I can't think of anything else I wanted to say. If it was closer to being done printing, I would go ahead and pull these clips off and, and lift the uh, little blower assembly away that I put on there, but I'm gonna let it go ahead and finish printing. But uh, basically, I just extended them up, had to extend the wire. You can see there's a little union there. Cable tie things out of the way. This way it looks a little bit neater. And, and they did have places for both fans down here. They had the uh, fan for cooling the extruder itself and then the part cooling fan there. I even threw in a fan in this fan hole, which they don't give you in case I wanted to blow air here. But there isn't another fan port here, so I basically would just have to wire that across the uh, 12 volt supply down here if I wanted it on. Doesn't seem to need it. This thing is, uh, how many hours has it been running now? Uh, four hours and 46 minutes. And uh, all of the uh, heat sinks and everything stayed just barely warm. Okay, that's it. Talk to you later.